You good? You want to take it away with Schmitz? Absolutely. Uh, nice sunny day here today, Brian. What's the feel like a day before facing Austin FC? Good. Vibes are good. It was a tough road trip. You know, Wednesday, Saturday, we've been gone. Seems like a long time. Sunday was Mother's Day. It was a good reset. A couple of good days of training and looking forward to another tough two-game stretch. It seemed like Raul was full on practice. Is that the case? Uh, he's getting closer. His uh, new national team coach is here visiting. He's in a very good mood. Uh, Senor Reynoso is a very acclaimed coach. Did my research, very nice man. So look forward to working with him and you know making sure that the two organizations, national team and us, work together to keep Raul healthy and opportunities and all that. So it was good. Happy, other, happy to meet him. Other updates on injured players? Uh, knew who will be involved in the game. Chu will be involved in the game. Christian, no. Raul, no. Uh, who else? Uh, Ro, no. no. Uh, how do you have any closer to a timeline on Christian? No, I don't. Unfortunately, uh, again, I know I sound like a broken record, but I'm not taking any chances. He's got to clear, he's got to just remove the last lingering symptoms that he has. We're ramping him up, Jeremiah, that's what I can say. He's ramping up his activity, and we'll see how his body, how his head reacts, and if it's good, then he'll ramp him up even more, and we'll just take it step by step. And not to uh, drill too far on this, but how far away do you think Raul is to be able to play? <laughs> Raul would tell you he's ready to play tomorrow. I'm going to take this rest of the week to, you know, think about it. And then let's see if he can train in full next week. Uh, we might, you know, we might let him go. Going back and watching the film from, uh, from the game in Houston, you know, what stood out from, from being a man up in that match and not being able to, to get more on goal for the most of the It was an odd film review because we focused mainly on the first 20 minutes. We actually played better when we were even numbers. Uh, you know, some of the coaching points were just patience and, you know, changing the point of attack side to side, some of those things. But we mentioned that. We messaged that already. We already trained that. Uh, who knows how Austin's going to line up. They've been playing a back line of five. Uh, I know it's a midweek. They've got a home game Saturday. Does, you know, do they, you know, have a mixed group and prepare for the home game? Or they think this is the game they can collect points off of? I don't know. So let's just see. But if they do play a back line of five, there's less space. Got to talk about that. That's similar. They've had a tough season, Austin has, and, and you faced a, a number of teams who've been had had tough seasons to that point. You know, how do you go about you know preparing for a team that's in, in some ways kind of similar to a KC or a Portland or like that? The message, Jackson, it's a great question. The message is just I told him before the film today, said we've you know let some of our arch rivals back in. Uh, let's not do it again. When you got a guy like Paul Rothrock who has three games and three goals, how do you make sure his confidence doesn't get too out of out of control? And you make sure that kid, he stays focused on that how to get better. That kid's level-headed. Yeah. He grew up in a nice family situation, Georgetown, Notre Dame. I mean, he's a grounded kid. He wants to be here. He wants to play. It's ev it's clearly evident when you watch him play for us. He wants to be part of this squad. Nothing's going to derail that. He's not going to you know, waste this opportunity. He's too smart for that. Ryan, how do you, is there, you comfortable with your execution in the final third in terms of just, you know, what I'd like to score there? more for sure. Chances were few and far to come in, in, against Houston and even some of the last games, but, you know, there's been some dysfunction. There's been some rotating lineups. There's been the Kansas City debacle that I took part in. So we'll get back at it. At Cody Baker, I mean, I feel like you're a proud papa on a day like today when you see these young kids just, you know. I'm a proud papa. Wade's a proud papa. You know, we're all proud of them. They're, they're, they're great kids. You mentioned Rothrock, but Jackson had an unorthodox, you know, 
journey into being a pro. Why can't Rothrock do it? You know, Cody's more traditional, but he's 19, so he's not Danny Leva or Obed Vargas, but he's himself. He works hard, tenacious defender. He's got the grit. He's got the Pacific Northwest grit. That's what I like. Lots of, lots of good things about that kid. You've talked about um, the great locker room that you have. And just having that, how much does it help in terms of the cohesiveness, healthy competition, young guys trying to play and get older guys feeling that they can help them with the goal to win? Yeah, I think that's just, uh, I don't want to say natural because I think we had to build that culture I think when we started. You know, way back when in the USL days, through Ziggy's tenure, through my tenure, the Seattle teams have always had a little bit of that character. We've always been a close-knit group. A lot of times that comes from just familiarity with players from this area. You know, uh, I, think that, I think that the academy does a great job. You know, Wade does a great job. We've been bringing younger players in to our preseason ever since 2016. I, mean, I remember that first crop in 2016, we brought Ezreal and some of those really young guys. They were only 15, Danny, 15, 14, Marlon Vargas. I mean, we incorporated the young kids right away so they understand the expectations of what it takes to get to the senior level. How would you describe what you might face against us in FC tomorrow? Oh, we're unsure. I mean, it might go back to 4-3-3. I think Brad Ring is a tremendous player, and they're playing him on the back line. I mean, I don't know. I mean, Derussi is a big miss. Uh, you know, MVP candidate uh, when he's healthy. Uh, Zardes, Bruin, Aruti. He's got three really exceptional, you know, veteran goal scorers. Who knows, he might surprise us with 4-4-2, you never know. Maybe he starts Will, I don't know. How excited are you to see Will? I, I love Will Bruin. <laughs> I think Will Bruin's great. What are you looking uh, from your team tomorrow? I, I would say first 20, but I mean, just overall in terms Fast of start, we talked about that, Maz, again, an intuitive question, because we talked about the first nine minutes of Houston, small sample size, but I thought that first 10 minutes of Houston was really good, the positioning was good. You know, our movement was good, passing was good, so we'll try and replicate that. What was the conversation like with, uh, with Craig when it came to Cody Baker and, and sort of where he was at the start of the season and, and sort of what made signing him now so important or so? Well, I think there was a backlog at right back, <clears throat> which is Cody's kind of natural position. You know, with Reed having been signed, you know, perhaps more as an attacking player. Now he's moved back to right back with Ethan kind of being a tweener, kind of going back and forth uh, to having Kellen and Alex. So where did Cody fit? When was he going to get signed? Because I don't think the question was ever, we're not going to sign him. It was just a question of the timing. And so now as things have progressed and, you know, as we look to the summer window and we had talked early on about loaning players for minutes, so who's going to go out on loan, who's going to stay here, who's going to fight for playing time. You know, we did that with Danny. You know, we allowed Obed to go to the 20s. It's the same process for that right-hand side. What are we going to do with some of those young kids? Those conversations have been going on since the start of the season with Craig. And they'll continue to keep going until we make final decisions. But signing Cody was never a, you know, never not going to happen. It was just a question of what. So was his ability to play on the left side sort of like, in your mind, sort of what pushed him up to, like, let's get him on the roster yeah. now? I think that versatility, you know, because look, as Kellen winds his career down and, you know, you bring fresh guys in, Kellen was great because you play him on both sides. And it's always better. We had O'Neill Fisher yeah. could play on both sides, you know, and it's handy to have. Now, look, now with the expanded rosters and 20 and five subs, it, it's a little bit different. But back in the day, when you only had three subs, you needed guys like that on the bench. And Cody, yeah, that's one of his positives for sure. We've talked about young players. Uh, 
former young player used to be in the system, Danny Robles, is now with Ballard FC, who gets their season started on Thursday. Jason Farrell is head coach. Uh, do, you, do you monitor Ballard FC? Are you interested well, in I him follow them on Instagram and Twitter, and I know Amadou Sanyang, another former Sounder, is one of the assistants. Uh, Interbay is a great little stadium, neighborhood place. I mean, it's a great success story. What was, what was Jason like as, a, as both a coach and a player? Uh, I mean, as a coach, I don't know so well, Jackson. I know more as a player. Yeah. Uh, you know, when he played for the Sounders in the Rebirth, he was a no-nonsense, up-and-down, hard-working, gritty kid from up north. Uh, same when he, when he played for me as well. I mean, it was, it was good. I mean, I enjoyed having him on there. His leadership, he had good leadership skills. Probably translates into a good coach. You mentioned uh, Dobler. What's his uh, status? He's got an injured his it's, his ankle swollen. I mean, it's pretty bad. It might be two, three weeks, which was unfortunate because we need we need we needed him. Any other questions for Coach Fletcher? Thank you. Right, thank you. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.